So my name is Tiwin Yue. Uh, today I'm going to present my paper with a the towards an interpretable approach to classify and summarize crisis events from microblocks. Uh, this is a joint work with a perspective graph from uh, Indian Institute of Technology at Bangkok, India. So here is an overview of my presentation. I will start with the introduction, then uh, I will present the problem formulation and our proposed approach. Next, I will go with the experiments uh, and results and finally the conclusion. So now let's get started. Uh, so recently, social media becomes uh, really popular and important uh, during crisis events. Uh, machine says books that on social media contain, can contain valuable information such as uh, situational updates, every test, and so on. So a research has shown that uh, around 69% of people expect responders to answer the calls for help on social media. Besides, a uh, human organization also relies on a uh, desire to gain uh, situational you know, awareness and uh, plan for its support. However, crisis-related posts are normally investing in high volume of uh, irrelevant information. So it's uh, really important to develop automatic methods for classification and summarization of crisis events. So that's also our aim in uh, this study. Uh, there exists a lot of uh, you know, existing uh, works on uh, this direction. However, you know, all the existing uh, crisis-related classification and summarization approaches mainly focus on performance improvement, uh, but uh, they did not pay attention at the decision-making process. Um, however, designing an interpretable model becomes uh, you know, really important, especially in case of uh, you know, crisis events. Uh, it helps you know, you know, to make the model become transparent to users you know, and increase their trust to use our model. Uh, one can use uh, attention-based uh, approach to design an interpretable model. However, you know, standard attention models do not really provide a uh, meaningful explanation. For example, if um, you know, I if we apply a you know, simple bird-based uh, attention model to uh, make a prediction for the tree uh, shown on the slide, uh, then we get the, the label infrastructure damage. Uh, we can see you know, that the tree uh, covers some information about temples flattening. Uh, so uh, it can be true to classify this uh, tweet into infrastructure damage class. Um, however, when we extract the explanation uh, based on the attention weight, uh, then uh, the model seems to focus on unimportant information or even um, you know, on uh, even punctuation here. So it doesn't really make uh, much sense to human eyes. Uh, so our aim in this study is to design a model that um, uh, has a trade-off between uh, model performance and interpretability. Uh, here is a problem. Given a screen of trees during crisis events, then we want to solve two problems. The first one is to classify the trees into different humanitarian classes with uh, human understandable explanation. We are so called that the rationales. Uh, so the second problem is to uh, generate um, uh, summaries of uh, class level trees. On this slide, you can see the list of uh, humanitarian classes um, and also a uh, true example of uh, trees with the, uh, the class label and rationales. The rationales uh, are basically the uh, short snippets uh, that. Uh, show the uh, relevant and important information as the evidence for the, the class label. Um, here is our proposed approach. Um, we first analyze small data sets that includes the uh, class labels and rationales. Uh, then we use uh, these data set and that we train our multicast uh, classification models um, uh, to generate the uh, class labels and rationales for the new coming you know, uh, piece. 
na activity is all the information from a classification phase um, to uh, generate a summary of the tweets. Uh, now let me uh, explain the classification model in detail. Um, we follow the interpretable uh, by design uh, approach from a previous work in 2021. Um, our classification model includes uh, two stages. And the first stage um, contains uh, a share. Uh, the first stage is uh, basically a multicast um, uh, model um, that includes um, a share work and quarter and three decoders. Uh, the first decoder is responsible for predicting the class label. And the second decoder is basically a fully connected layer with a uh, sigma function to predict uh, whether an uh, input um, work is a part of rationale or not. So after that, we get um, as in the you know, uh, rationales uh, as uh, shown on the slide. Uh, from that, we feed all the effective rationale to the second stage. Uh, this stage is actually a, a simple bird based classification model. From that, we generate the you know, final class level. Uh, the second stage uh, makes the model become transparent to users that uh, we are relying on the expected rationale for the prediction. Um, comes to the summarization model, we want to design um, an uh, unsupervised uh, summarization model that, uh, that does not require any training data, data. And also the model should be robust uh, enough for near real-time summarization. And the idea is that uh, we observe that um, um, all the rationales uh, cover the important information uh, in the in, uh, input tweets. So, we uh, uh, maximize the coverage of all the rationales for summarization. Um, the final summary is generated by uh, solving the maximization problem um, by using an um, uh, integer linear programming approach. Uh, as I said, uh, we maximize the coverage of all the rationales um, with some constraints. For example, the uh, the summary length limit uh, should be of at most n words. Uh, whenever the model selects uh, a rational um, word, then it should select uh, at least um, uh, a tweet containing that uh, word. Uh, whenever the model selects a tweet to the in a summary, then it should select uh, all the rational words in that uh, tweet. Uh, we run our in, um, Experiments on two data sets. The first one is Typhoon Habitat uh, data set in 2014. The second is uh, Maple Earthquake um, in 2015. Um, on the slide, you can see the size of the label data set for you know, training our classification models. Um, uh, for summarization, we employ uh, five volunteers to help us prepare class level summaries of uh, 200 words. Um, for each um, you know, class level and each uh, event date you know, for evaluation. Uh, thanks to the results, um, you know, we I compare our, our classification model with some existing uh, models. Um, uh, uh, you can see on the first uh, three rows, um, you know, we evaluate the classification you know, performance by uh, micro F1. For the, and evaluate the uh, uh, rational extraction class based on token F1. However, these uh, models uh, only um, focus on the classification performance. Uh, they do not really extract the rationale, so we don't have the evaluation here. We also apply uh, a bird based attention model uh, to generate the you know, rationales based on the attention weight. Uh, however, the you know, um, the rational task here uh, doesn't you know, have the good performance. Um, uh, among all the methods, we see that uh, our model without the second stage uh, achieved the, you know, uh, the best performance in terms of uh, both classification uh, prediction and um, uh, rational extraction. 
However, without the second stage, then uh, one cannot uh, make sure that uh, the model is relying on rationale for the prediction or not. So our model on the last row uh, showed the best trade off between the uh, classification performance and rationale interaction with us. We also evaluate the importance of uh, rationale uh, by using two metrics, uh, sufficiency and uh, comprehensiveness. Uh, first, we uh, feed uh, the original uh, data to the model and uh, measure the performance. Uh, then for the sufficiency, we remove um, all the uh, non rational uh, words in the original data uh, and measure the change in the performance. Uh, for the comprehensive nodes, uh, we uh, remove all the rational and uh, feed the other the, the remaining uh, words in the original text uh, to the model and uh, observe the drop in the performance. Uh, you can see here, you know, um, by using only rationale, then our model uh, achieved the you know, similar or you know, similar classification results, or even better in case of uh, uh, micro earthquake data set. It means that uh, you know, the non rationale words uh, are the noisy things. If we uh, remove uh, them, then we even get a slight you know, improvement in the performance here. Um, and uh, by um, dropping all the uh, rationales, then we see the significant drop uh, in the performance here in, uh, in place of both uh, Typhoon Hawaii and Echo Effect data set. Um, just to remind that we have uh, our model has true stage prediction. In, uh, uh, however, we observe that um, in uh, more than 90% of cases, uh, the in, uh, Predicted class level are uh, the same uh, for the two stage prediction. So it means that by using only a rationale as sufficient uh, enough uh, uh, to uh, make the prediction compared to using the original input. Uh, one can say that um, our classification model requires a uh, heavy. Um, annotation process. However, the good thing is that uh, the model can be uh, applied to the future event without uh, further annotation. For example, if we use uh, uh, our model uh, train on a quick data set and evaluate it on um, um, and generate a decision for the, the Mexico uh, earthquake data set, then we get the performance of more than 80% um, F1 score already. Uh, for summarization, uh, uh, we showed the uh, results for two, uh, two class labels here, but we observed similar patterns for the other you know, class labels. It, it can be seen that um, you know, our, model, you know, uh, our model here outperforms all the um, baseline methods um, and on average, then uh, our RASA model Apple forms uh, cows and pass them by five and eight you know, percent, and other base lines by uh, more than ten percent. Um, compared to the most competitive um, you know, base lines, cows that apply similar approach by uh, maximizing the coverage of all the words like um, verbs, verbs, nouns, and uh, numbers, then uh, by focusing only on rationales. Uh, our model reduced the number of words to be optimized by 50%. So you know, it has a faster running time. Uh, we also evaluate the qualitative results by giving all the summaries to a uh, human for evaluation. The majority of users uh, bought our model as the most informative, um, you know, mo uh, some generate the most informative uh, summary. And all of them say that they prefer the, the summary with the highlighted rationale because uh, it helps them to ignore all the noisy part in the tweet and focus on uh, important information. Um, so come to the results, uh, come to the conclusion. Now, in this study, we provide the first human annotation of the rationale on uh, two crisis data set um, using uh, this 
the Zins data set, uh, we now introduced uh, uh, an interpretable by design classification model in a, in a for disaster events on Twitter. And um, the, our experiments uh, show that the proposed classification and uh, uh, summarization model uh, outperforms all the existing methods and has a faster running time in terms of uh, summarization. Yeah, so uh, that was my presentation. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please be free to ask. Yeah. Thank you, Huyen, for the presentation. Um, um, thank you for uh, for for coming, Rohan. Uh, we saw your your chat thread. So, if you have any questions now, I think we can take one question or two. Uh, if you, can, you want to use the hands tool uh, to to ask questions, go ahead. Otherwise, I think, uh, you, well, I had one question reading the paper, which is the, if you could tell us like some learnings between the first stage and second stage uh, classification, I see that the accuracy is pretty similar, but uh, yeah. there are differences. And I think that the paper doesn't have the confusion matrix, so it's difficult to understand, you know, so what are the learnings there, right? So what is your intuition? What are the gains and losses in, in that kind of uh, first versus second stage? Also, there's a generalization exercise in there with the Mexican the data set. And I think you see this first stage versus second stage. It would be interesting, I think, to, to, to get like your, your thoughts on that. No? So what, what, what is this first and second stage correcting or, or basically making like new mistakes, right? Is there any learnings yeah. on that? Yeah, thanks for the question. So basically, so the first stage will help us to generate the, you know, the class label or whether the tree belongs to the infrastructure, a caution, advice, or something like that. And also, it is tracking the rationales. And um, you know, that's how the, the short snippets as the you know, evidence for the class label. And the second stage, we rely on uh, only on the rationales instead of the original input to make the prediction. So by, by that way, when, when the user look at our model, they can see that, um, okay, our model is relying on this information to make the prediction. So it um, makes the model become um, interpretable by design. So it's not like yeah, the other attention-based model, um, uh, they, um, it's not clear uh, how the model makes the prediction. So by uh, applying the second stage, uh, um, we don't really get uh, the improvement in the performance, but it makes the model become interpretable by design. And um, you know, you know, our, as I said, uh, in, during the presentation, then uh, we need uh, the annotation process for you know, um, designing the model and uh, training the model. Um, it can be expensive, uh, however, uh, when we uh, train the model on Maple and Quickface data set, we can directly apply it on a new um, crisis data set without further uh, annotation. So that's um, uh, one of the advantages. 